Okay, I'm going to be all right. I want to see this place for myself because I want to know my status. Heavy, heavy. Hey, this is Kelly Rowland, and I'm here to learn. Join me as I take the journey of a lifetime to South Africa. I'm so happy in this moment. I'm just jumping in time. Tanzania. What I saw today hurt me because so many young people are involved. Kenya. Ah, I'm ah, sorry. And the United States. I want young people to be more proactive. Visiting some of the most amazing and captivating HIV awareness projects and encounter some of the world's inspiring future leaders and greatest heroes. I'm Kelly Rowland, and this is my diary. June 15th, 2008. Sun City, South Africa. When I found out that I was coming to South Africa for my performance, I was more than excited. This ain't gonna be easy. <sighs> Performing in South Africa for me, uh, this was the second time I performed in South Africa, but this was different. This was a different performance. The energy in the room was different. And I think that it all exploded <laughs> on Survivor. I was truly moved on Survivor, just being the fact that, you know, you sing a song for so many years, and you hear so many people's stories um, about Survivor, what they've been through. I don't know how many stories I've heard, but I think because I saw um, how HIV and AIDS is, is real and how it's affecting so many lives and the numbers are not really changing. I just exploded with emotion on Survivor and I don't even know what I said to this day. I just knew I had to say something. I just wanna say, give me a second. I just wanna say, thank you so much, South Africa for having me. And granted, I'm not done yet, but I just wanna say, I've learned a lot about what's going on with HIV and AIDS in this epidemic. We should make sure that we are protecting ourselves, loving ourselves, caring for ourselves, loving life. You deserve life. Young people, one life, one time is all it takes. Protect yourself. You have too much in store. God bless you. And when I came off stage, I remember uh, my manager and my uncle looking at me like, whoa, what got into you? It was so many young people there, and I felt like I was looking at the generation. I'm looking at greatness in front of me, and I want them to be smart at every decision they make, um, how responsible they are to go and, and get tested, you know, know your status. Uh, and I think I got the point across. Yes. Fantastic show, the best. Johannesburg, South Africa. I grabbed a moment to sit down with some really cool kids at the MTV base offices in South Africa. So I'm so happy we all got a chance to sit down and chill and talk about something that's very important to me, I'm sure very important to you guys. Um, and of course, it's all dealing with AIDS and HIV awareness. And I, I guess I just wanna hear like everybody's opinions. I think not having sex is First of all, unrealistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's unrealistic, I feel, because it's unnatural. It's unnatural. So, if you. It's look, unnatural to not have sex? Yeah. It is. Is that like a men thing? No, because, no, no, it's not no, 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 no. No, because I've heard men say that a lot. No, like, a lot. But it's like men, it's like, man, I gotta get mine in. I'm sorry. And I'd like to say that I'm 100% natural, okay? Because I've made the decision to wait. I work with teen girls and they talk to me about this issue about sex and you know what I tell to them is that any man who would put a price on your body would use a diamond as a doorstop. 
because they don't know the value within you. Sexism is a very intimate thing, and, and, and sometimes it's not really that you don't have a choice. There's a choice. The condom is sitting there, right there, you know. And it happens that you don't use it. I mean, I've had my 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 close calls, you know, in, in, in like in a relationship. You know, where you're, I'm like, my goodness, this is too hot. You know, right now, I, I don't think I want to spoil the moment. I like how blunt you are. Lovely. Well, Wish I was that darn gutsy. I have this flatmate of mine, you know. He, he's, um, he's my color, you know. And um, for, for reasons, you know, he, he got hooked up with this white lady, you know. And um, yeah, he came to me and was like, I did it. I did it. I said, what you do? He said, I did it. I didn't use it. You didn't use it? Why? He, he was like, you white trick, man. You white trick. I, you think you, you think color matters when it comes to like, I mean, I was like, gosh, no, you, you didn't do it. So it, there's a misconception. I mean, mostly amongst like, yeah, people of maybe my color. And, and they think that. It's okay. The, the problem is just within black like, people. Mm. It ain't. Seriously. Mm. So I was like, whoa, gee, you need to go get tested, you need to go get some help, you know, wow. because, yeah, it was that bad. I mean, it was, it was really bad. Did, has he gone to get tested since? Uh, he didn't tell me. Uh, yeah, but he was sincere enough to tell me he didn't do it, you know, protection. So it's great that you told him. I think that that's half the battle. June 17th, 2008. I will never forget June 17th. Dar Esma, Tanzania. When I first arrived in Tanzania, I remember thinking, the weather's so tropical, it's so beautiful, the, the sun was out, I saw trees swaying, the breeze was nice, I opened my window, it was beautiful. It reminded me a lot of Miami, that's where I live. <laughs> Hello, Tanzania. Hello, Tanzania. Nice suit. Oh, check his shoes out. Hey, hold up your shoes. Oh, oh man. my God. Hey, your shoes. Stop. <laughs> hey, your shoes. Let me see your shoes. Oh, he got a little. Hold on. He got a little snake skin on there. Not snake skin, <laughs> snake skin. He's jazzy. Look like the dog you. I'm about to dog myself. This is real wrong. I look like somebody's like 60 year old mama. My my hair is the worst. It's red. My head looks about this big. I just look crazy. It's time for a new passport picture. I meet Eliza this trip. Is that correct? Eliza's one of the grantees. I was excited and a bit anxious to go to Kenya and Tanzania because now this is it. This is what being an ambassador is all about, getting out there and seeing it firsthand. I didn't know what I was in for. Hey, this is Kelly Rowland. The Staying Alive Foundation presents awards to individuals or groups who are relentless in their mission to encourage, educate, and empower their peers in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Each Staying Alive grant recipient receives a cash grant from the Staying Alive Foundation to enable them to realize a project associated with raising the awareness about HIV and AIDS. Amen. Join me as I take the journey of a lifetime to South Africa, Tanzania, Kenya, and the United States, visiting some of the most amazing and captivating HIV awareness projects and encounter some of the world's inspiring future leaders. I'm Kelly Rowland, and this is my diary. June 17th, 2008. Dar Eslam, Tanzania. We are on our way right now to T-Mark. We're going to meet Eliza. Um, I'm really excited about meeting Eliza. I've read a little bit up on her, and she sounds like an amazing, amazing person. I can't wait to meet her. Here we go. My name is Elizabeth Joseph. I'm from Wailinga, and I'm 25 years old. 
Hapa ni Dar es Salaam Mabibo Elizabeth Yusi Group. Uh, Elizabeth Yusi Group kazi tunazozifanya ni kuokoa wasichana ambao wamejiingiza katika madawa kulevya pamoja na ukahaba. Tunawahifadhi katika kituo chetu ambacho kwa sasa hivi kina wasichana sita. Kuendeleza pia kujua kusoma na kuandika ili hapo baadaye watakapokuwa wametoka hapa kituoni wao wanajua kusoma na kuandika iwapo kama watapata kazi. Na wasichana ambao tumeshawasaidia mpaka sasa hivi ni watano ambao walikuwa wanakaa hapa kituoni tunajivunia kwa sababu tayari wamebadilika na wamekuwa raia wema na mmoja sasa hivi ameolewa. Sasa kuna wale wengine ambao yani tunawatoa katika sehemu zao kama zile ambazo ni mbaya kama pale uwanja ofisi. Meeting Alisa and watching the documentary were uh, that was I can't even put it into words. I think that's actually what happened after I watched the documentary because she was very open, very detailed, very intimate about her story. Unapokwenda pale kwa mfano hospitali kwenda kuchukua dawa nakuta watu hivi sasa sema hii Mungu wangu hao kweli wana ukimwi hao. Sasa na mimi hapo ndo naanza kujiamini. Kumbe na mimi nimo. Lakini kwa sababu nje kumuliza na doctor mara mbili mara tatu anaambia mpaka nipo timiza miaka 14 kukutana na mama akaambia sasa nataka nikupeleke mjini ambako utafanya kazi na utasoma na utaishi vizuri tu naweza nikarudi kwa mama nina gari naweza nikarudi kwa mama nina pesa akanikabidhi kwa ile mama akampa shingapi shingefukumi akanambia kwamba utakao naamka saa 11 and looking at her and looking at the documentary na yule baba and looking at her and looking at the documentary thinking I don't know what I would have done. Kambia mama naomba nauli tu. Ikaona mlango unafunguliwa. Kwa kwanza yule mama na polisi wa wiji. Akaambia ndo yule pale. Umnyesha yana ziko wapi jamani mimi sijaiba alinipiga. Nilikuwa sijui maana ya geleza ni nini. Nikaa nimekaa mle miezi mitatu. Nilipotoka nje sasa nilikuwa nafikiria. Najisikia furaha lakini sio sana. Kwa kuwa lile eneo kwa kweli Natamani ningekuwa na uwezo ningelivunja mimi mwenyewe lakini kwa kuwa sina uwezo na wasichana nazidi kuwaona Navuta picha haraka haraka na wakumbuka wasichana wenzangu ambao tulikuwa wote ambao wamekufa na wale nawaona kama vile watakufa kama vile wengine walivyotangulia kwa ugonjwa wa ukimwi Meeting her Elisa such a beautiful beautiful spirit when you meet her and watching her documentary and how she went into detail about Hyena Square and all it entails. I remember thinking, I want to see this place for myself. You walk around there and it's like zombies, to be honest. Um, you, you see zombies, you see little kids, and I remember when I see a child, I just, I'm looking at the future and I'm wondering how do they feel? What are they going through? You don't want the same path for them. You don't want Hyena Square for them. Was this her room, Vanessa? It's in Eliza. Yeah. Yeah, this was her room. Sick, sick kids. When you get there, it's nothing like anything you would ever imagine. It's like death and, and hell and, and hopelessness. And it freaks you out, to be quite honest with you. And I remember thinking, I don't want this for anybody. And I remember taking her hand and walking out of there. And um, 
us looking at each other and almost like reassurance. I don't know what that moment was, but it was so good. I had to hold back my tears. Um, but I'm happy that she showed me Hyena Square. Um, I think that a lot of people should see Hyena Square for themselves. One situation I saw that really hurt me the most was PLA. Piele is a beautiful girl. Nilipofika pale nilikuwa na miaka 26. Nilipofika pale siku ya kwanza kabisa pale uwanja wa ofisi mazingira niliyokuta pale kwa kweli. Nilisikitika sana afu nililia sana. Sababu alivofariki hamna tena maendeleo ya shule. Tukustushumeshe ikawa hakuna. Kabisa tena nikaanza kukotika kuruka ruka nikapata mimba. Nikapata mimba ndo nyumbani nikaa nimefukuzwa. Yule mwanamume alizalisha tena akawa nitaki ndo kuna rafiki yangu mmoja anaitwa Mariana akanichukua na mimi nakaa uwanja wa ofisi tuende kule utaishi tu na mtoto wako utamlea kabili basi yule rafiki yangu akaniambia utakuwa unakaa hapa mpaka nitakapokupatia nguo za kuanzia za kuendea viwanja kabili yule nikatoka ilala nikaenda uwanja wa ofisi <laughs> kodi ya nyumba ni 700 kwa kila siku Na ndani ya mwezi kuna siku 30. Kwa kila siku nalala wanaume mmoja ili nilipie kodi ya chumba. Kutoka huko sasa dadangu kwa hivi hivi tu gafeti nikatoka sasa nitaelekea wapi nikishatoka pale. Nitoke tu naamua sawa sitaki nikae hata pale nikae hata huko Swahili na kisa nitatoka nitaelekea vipi. I remember asking her a lot of questions and it just seemed like she just didn't care anymore. Yeah. She yeah. contested. <laughs> Um, the emotion I had after I left PLA was, it was too much for me. It was sad. <laughs> On the ride back from Hyena Square, I had so many emotions. By the time for the press conference, I had gathered myself, but eventually, I broke down. Y'all have asked us all the questions and all there is to say, my question for you is, what are you doing? How are you making sure that your young people of Tanzania aren't going to be affected by this disease that's continuing to destroy our youth? What I saw today hurt me because so many young people are involved. And it's important that everybody in this room is responsible for young people. We can't continue to watch this disease spread. This is where we as people have to bind together to change. These numbers have to go down. And you're a part of that. God bless you. I didn't realize how much the day really affected me. It really touched me at that moment on a very personal level. I have lost someone to AIDS, um, someone that was quite close to me um, since I'd known since I was a kid, about maybe 11 or 12 years old. And I remember watching them pass in a course of days and just thinking, I don't want that to happen to anybody else that I love. June 18th, 2008. Today we are on our way to the Biafra High School for a performance from Tayopa. Tayopa is an organization set up in Dar es Salaam by HIV positive youth who use drama, music, and storytelling to inform young people about HIV. They are amazing. <laughs> I think above anything, what I love the most about the performance is the fact that they had a point to get across. And one thing that I love in particular, 
was the fact that they did a, a skit where it was a young man. He was looking at this girl. He checks her out, and he's like, you know, I want to get with you. He's using a lot of hand motions, a lot of body language. And she says, no, no. And he pulls out some money, shillings, actually, in Tanzania. And he pulls out shillings, and he shows her his money. And she comes up to him. And they get together, and they have sex. He does the same thing to another young woman, and then there's a big drum that hits, and all of the girls fall down. And I remember in that moment, like, I think my stomach went into my throat because it was just that fast that HIV and AIDS can spread. These are some of the smartest kids I've ever met. Just amazing. Their beautiful faces just enlightened me. I felt so honored to be around them. I think you have amazing organizations like Tayopa. And I, I think that what makes their organization so beautiful is the fact that they go back into those rural areas and they minister to them through song, through dance, through, through acting. And I think that that touches lives. I want to go with them on one trip. Yesterday I was able to um, go with Eliza, um, who is um, the founder of the Elizabeth Youth Group. And um, she's HIV positive, she's an ex-sex worker. And I went with her into Hyena Square. And I actually walked um, through Hyena Square and I saw so much. And I think that journey has changed my life. It's made me want to go back into those areas and say, oh, come with me, let's go get tested. You know, or let me teach you about AIDS, let me teach you about HIV and how real it is. Because I think that's what people don't realize is that it's real and it doesn't have a face. Protect yourself. I don't have a question to ask you, but I want to make you first possible. Sing for our lives. One song by Sunday Chapel. Love you. From my time in Tanzania, I take away hope for change. Because with groups like Tayopa and Eliza, I know that they're going to bring so much awareness to their communities and their villages. And I look at them and I see their tenacity and their excitement to spread the awareness of HIV and AIDS around. So I feel hope, very hopeful. June 19th, 2008, Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. OK. <laughs> In the next chapter of my journey, I find myself off to Nairobi, Kenya. I'll be meeting Elizabeth. She's the founder of the Kisumu Self-Help Disabled Group, Georgina from Positive Youth Initiative, and getting an HIV test. Kenya, I got a chance to meet another hero, I must say, by the name of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth heads up the Kisumu Disabled and Self-Help Group. My name is Elizabeth Atienu. I uh, come from Kisumu. I uh, run Kisumu Disabled Group. When I was told that I'm going to meet Kelly, I was surprised. Yeah. Okay, so your story is so interesting. I want you to start from the very beginning okay. and tell us everything. Because I, when I read up on how amazing you are, okay. what an overcomer you are, how inspiration, okay. uh, what an inspiration you are, I want other people to know about that. Can you start from the very beginning? I was stuck uh, with polio mm -hmm. um, when I was nine, eight months. Mm -hmm. um, got to my mom. Since my mom passed away, mm -hmm. my father also passed away mm -hmm. on an old, old road accident. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in high school? People cannot connect, sit next to me mm -hmm. because I, I was going to give them. Like they, 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 think, they think this is a, a disease that can be spread. Mm -hmm. Also in class, mm -hmm. teachers can say things about me 
Teachers? Yes. They also have stigma. So you were raped. Yeah. And, and I, I can only imagine it's almost like one situation on top of another situation on top of another situation. I want to tell people, uh, to tell people that if, if I was raped, people with disability so can also be, mm -hmm. be raped and get HIV AIDS mm -hmm. from those people. I had no idea that the stigma which is often placed on those who suffer from HIV could be like the discrimination which a disabled person experiences. Elizabeth is truly a hero and should be celebrated for her achievements. Heavy, heavy. Oh. After going to Tanzania and experiencing so much and hearing so many different stories, just everything that Tanzania gave me, um, I remember thinking, what is going to happen in Kenya? And then I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, I'm about to take an HIV test myself. Not every time that you take an HIV test are you like, ah, you know, you're not comfortable every time. Then again, we also do the a second test. You get one line, it means our doubts are negative. You think so many thoughts walking down the hallway. You have to go to the room. Just nervous, my palms were sweating. I just, I remember thinking in the back of my head, you're thinking so many different things. Um, and thinking I just want to get this over with because I want to know my status. I'm scared, but I want to know my status. You come in here with me because you were so brave. Think <laughs> close the door because I don't need this so much. I was really happy that a young man by the name of John uh, would take the test with me. John uh, was uh, a, a young man that I met at uh, the hospital. And I remember him being so open and honest about his story. My girlfriend, before we parted, she actually, re actually realized that she was pregnant. And just a few <laughs> weeks later, she got even married with another guy. And they are up to now living together. So that made me to feel like she was actually doing like having multiple partners at the same time because we used to have sex and never used to use protection. I was thinking like if I turned out to be positive then I had some reservations on my mind and that really like dragged me back. But then the other side was I was I felt like I had the privilege to get tested with a, a world superstar. So it was like a morale, a morale booster for me to get a test. In sub-Saharan Africa, where there are so many taboos and myths associated with HIV and AIDS, and also stigma, people believe that there's actually not even HIV. AIDS does not exist in their mind. So Kelly Rowland, being a black American superstar, coming all the way to sub-Saharan Africa to taking a test with a young person like me, it's actually a very good morale booster for young people to go and take their HIV test because if Kerry Lawrence actually did it and did it to an African, then I think all young African people should go and take a test too. It's young, it's cool. I have a smaller needle because hmm? I'm a lady. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One. Oh. 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 There is pain that yes. is going to be shortly, as yes. I've told you. And we are done. Okay. Yeah. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, when I came out of the test, I remember meeting a group by the name of PYI that MTV Staying Alive Foundation funds as well. Don't they make change? It's love. Um, I met a young lady by the name of Georgina. Georgina and I are now friends for life. She's from Kenya and she gave me this bracelet. My name is Georgina Nakitari and I come from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm a social worker and I also volunteer at the Positivist Initiative as a coordinator and as a counselor. When I knew about my status, I was so surprised. I never thought someone could be HIV positive when you just had your first sexual encounter with your first boyfriend. 
really shocked me. He was my first love. We fell in love and uh, I, be I believed him, I trusted him. We didn't think of using a condom. He told me he was a virgin too, so I assumed that he was negative and I was negative. Our relationship produced unplanned pregnancy. That's when no, I knew about my status when I went to go check my my health. I trusted him so much, not knowing that I would end up being HIV positive. She just shared so much of her story with me, and I just remember thinking, this is me. This could be me. And I realized that it's not because she lives in Kenya that this is happening to her. These are stories that you hear in relationships all over the world. Hey, this is Kelly Rowland. For me, being the Staying Alive ambassador means I'm representing you. you From South Africa, Kenya, mm. only for you, to Tanzania. I had a question. Now my duties as the MTV Staying Alive ambassador have brought me back to the United States of America. I'll be traveling to New York City to meet with a group and discuss some of the issues. It only takes one time to catch HIV, and there's other things out there besides HIV mm -hmm. and pregnancy. Join me as I take the journey of a lifetime. I'm Kelly Rowland, and this is my diary. In my travels as a Staying Alive ambassador in Africa, I noticed that there were a lot of issues we need to address in order for us to move forward in our fight against this epidemic. But what I really want everyone to understand is that this AIDS thing is not an African disease. My name is Natalia Callis. I'm 29 years old and I live in Charleston, South Carolina. The organization I represent is called Carolina Empowerment Group and is a nonprofit agency that I co-founded two years ago. Our mission is to empower people day by day by providing activities and outreach for young people in regards to like HIV and AIDS and sexual health information. You know, just more of a prevention type of project. When I went off to college, I met this guy and fell in love with him but end up falling in love with the wrong person. I had caught him in bed with somebody else. Mm -hmm. the, the me catching him in bed was the envelope that pushed me, but what really sealed the deal for me was when <laughs> I got a phone call from my father, my biological father, telling me that my mother, who had moved back to New York, was HIV positive. And she had became positive through her boyfriend, not because she was using drugs, because she actually cleaned herself up. And immediately, I said, okay, she got positive through her boyfriend who cheated on her, and look at me. A lot of us find ourselves in situations with bad relationships like me, but if you are gonna engage in sexual activity, you need to protect yourself. Every day I wake up, you know, I'm very passionate about trying to find another way to help a young person save their life and not get infected with HIV and AIDS. My after school program is called Youth in Action, and we meet on a weekly basis. And we talk about everything from sex, boys, drugs, relationships. So we go through a whole gamut of the different things that affect young people in their lives. Um, some of the major success of the program, you know, we try to encourage the young ladies, of course, to think positively and, and use protection and so on. But looking beyond that, there are some skills that we also encourage in the girls of getting educated, going off to college so that they become more independent and they don't have to rely on a male. Meeting Kellen Rowland, I feel like I'm not alone in this fight. I feel like as a celebrity like herself stepping up to the plate, she acknowledges that there are people around the world and here in the U.S. that are being affected, and she's trying to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia, it is such an honor, a pleasure to meet you. I am very, very <laughs> excited. You should very be. Excited. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely an honor. What was your inspiration behind starting your organization? 
Well, I lost my mother to HIV and AIDS back in January of 2006. So um, just being very angry with the disease and, and having a lot of questions and, and just um, wanting revenge in a sense, I said, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. And I started this organization, and every day I wake up, I try to put my fighting cap on and say, you know what, I'm going to do something today that's going to make a difference. And to try to help one person not have to go through the same things that I went through as being affected by the disease and watching my mother die slowly from the disease. It was a devastating time for me, you know, but um, just those pictures that I have in my mind, those memories I have in my mind of the last time I saw her, it just continues to help me go on because I don't want anybody to go through what I went through at all. Hi, Mommy. We love you. You know, what you see in the media a lot of times, um, the faces that you see of HIV and AIDS, especially here in America, a lot of times people don't see, um, you know, the last stages of AIDS or someone dying from AIDS. I think it takes a lot for celebrities to step out to the plate to really talk about HIV and AIDS because a lot of times people just think so ne negatively about it. But, um, you know, I really appreciate you just showing how much you care from from way up here, you know, because everyone looks at celebrities as being up here. And to come down to where we are and to the trenches and to really understand what we're going through really means a lot to us. Well, celebrity and mm -hmm. no celebrity, we're all going through this together. I mm -hmm. think that's the most important thing is that any and everybody can and should be involved. So right. I'm excited to be here. We're just getting <laughs> started. We're gonna fight this disease all Thank together. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, no. September 11th, 2008. New York City. Get a rope. <laughs> That's <was> perfect. <laughs> okay, so um, when I got a chance to visit South Africa, I got a chance to talk to young people just like us um, from all different walks of life, just basically just like on some really cool, chill conversation. And we were talking about AIDS and HIV and sex and um, how we feel about it and our point of views. And I wanted to basically hear everybody's point of view at this table, you know, about sex and, and having protective sex and everything. So who wants to start? <laughs> well, I just want to say sex is great. <laughs> it's not I was thinking the same thing. I just was going to say two things. There's two things that young people can do, mm -hmm. and there's things that people can do, and I think, Kelly, by you sitting here at this table, it makes an impact because there's a disconnect between celebrities and this epidemic. So for you to sit next to us and engage us is a huge step forward because it's connecting. And I think the other thing is that when I travel to schools, young people don't know this disease. They don't know. They don't know STDs. It's when you don't see it, you don't educate it, you don't know about it. And I think it's time that young people empower themselves yeah. to know what this disease looks like. It's in your classroom. It's in yeah. your community. It's on your campus. It is there. And if you're choosing to look around and not see it, then that's your decision. I want young people to be more proactive and take control of their futures and their health. When it comes to me contracting HIV, I contracted because I didn't love myself enough to protect myself. Right. I mean, it's just that simple. I love that. Also, is that when you know, so young people look at us, HIV positive, young, still living, they feel comfortable. It's okay, and it's not okay. It's, it's not right. easy. This I is the worst disease every day. ever. Mm -hmm. that, that medication that we take every day, every night, honey. Right. I mean, when I start talking about t stigma, it won't. It, I want to cry because I mean, it's it's really it's hard because it's like people look at me and they see a girl with HIV. They don't see who I am outside of that. Or, or anything like that. And, and I really feel the key to stigma is educating people about That's HIV. Right. Because if you're educated about this virus, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's no reason to stigmatize it. That, right. That's why I feel that it should be more in the schools. If it's a mandatory course that you have to take. You have I no agree. choice but to learn about it, about, about to learn about the awareness all together. Mm -hmm. And if it's a mandatory course, that means you have to pass that in order to graduate. Well, I passed I Spanish and I'm I not know mad at nothing that. about it. <laughs> but, but you would be aware about it. Like yeah. you, you know some but of the main things about Spanish. You would be yeah. aware. But aware because then it. once you know, then you're held accountable. Exactly. I think that's the most important thing. Exactly. It also needs to say that you know it's not only in the school that we need to go out to the street. That's right. That's where you can start from, though. That's the starting point. Oh, we're already out there. I'm telling you, we're 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 I'm 
in churches, high school, colleges, wherever they're going to let me in, I'm in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you know? What's going on in the back streets of them kids that are yeah. setting their bodies and using drugs and don't have any parents? I'm gonna they aren't t- even going to school and don't know how to read. No, I'm going to tell you what happened. Like in Africa, when I was in Tanzania, I heard stories just like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was this one area that we went to, whew, Hyena Square, and it was... It was hell on earth. Like, it's a hyena square everywhere, I realized. Like, even, like, I was born in Atlanta. I was like, wow, I was in the midst of a hyena square even in Atlanta. And <clears throat> and the craziest thing is that, like, I met sex workers. I met a young lady who started her own organization and goes out to all of these different places. And this other organization, Tayopa, where they go and they do different plays. And they basically show you, like, even, I mean, sometimes you need it broken down in dummy terms, you know, basically right. this is what happens mm-hmm. I'm afraid to really like be you know what I'm saying and 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 be out there like that because I'm afraid what I'm gonna get I didn't have multiple partners it puts you more at risk though and you're right you didn't but have I, multiple see, partners it, but, but here's the did. thing but with risk like I hate that word because it's just like am I at risk or is this low risk all of them right. is risky with me yeah. being a person living with HIV I'm telling you it's not a risk that you want to take yeah, I'm I'm cute and all this stuff, but I guarantee you. But I think that it's what the, the point is really is like, how much are you right. like? You're calling them partners. Is it really a partnership? Have you worked anything out? No. What the does it no, make you to be sexually? I'm talking about, I'm talking about metaphorically. Right. I'm talking about we say partnerships. Right. You're getting with this partner. This is your sexual partner. But is this really a partnership? What negotiation has gone on? It's Have you do actually know what's going that on with that person's organs at least? I mean, I don't right. have people. Don't, I feel like they have to even look. When we talk about risk, we can talk about multiple partners, one partner. But if you you have the mindset, it won't happen to me. You're at the biggest risk. Of the many things that we spoke about that day, one of the most moving messages I took away from the conversation was Marvelin saying you have to love yourself enough to protect yourself. And when you think about women, you think about how vulnerable women are. You think about how we are emotional, how we are receivers, and how a lot of the times or sometimes, you know, I know for me as a kid, I dealt with a lot of self-esteem issues and I didn't love myself as I should. And I just want to, I guess, encourage young women out there to love yourself enough to protect yourself. One person makes a difference. Uh, One voice makes a difference. Uh, One group like Teopa makes a difference. Think about how many one persons they meet. Once you know you're held accountable, you can make the difference, whoever's watching this. Don't you want to make a difference? It's not just me alone. We're all battling.